Hello everyone. Welcome to an academy let crack UPSC CSC English. About me, I am Sandeep Bhushan and my credentials are I have 10 years of teaching experience for civil services. I teach international relations, internal security and in-depth analysis of the trending editorials and articles. And this session will be certainly helpful for you in regards to crack prelims and mains examinations. So before that, I would say that uh, throughout my session, I would be emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases from the editorials and articles wherein we would be, I mean, I would be explaining you throughout my lecture that is could be one hour. So uh, my emphasis would be on the keywords and the key phrases. And thereby we will identify the factual and analytical questions, factual and analytical questions for prelims point of view. And also making sure that by imbibing the keywords and the key phrases, we will make sure that we get into the mode of imbibing the keywords and the key phrases in the answer writing, in the answer writing, which will be very, very useful for the mains examinations, wherein the, your mains uh, answer writing or your answers would be precise and concise by getting into the mode of or practicing by imbibing the keywords and the key phrases in your answer writing. So definitely it will be useful for you in regards to growth, prelims as well as mains examinations. So thereby you will also score high marks even in the mains examinations by your answers being precise and concise. So definitely this will help you to crack both prelims and mains 2020 as well as 2021 also. And in regards to before we get into that you have a notification in regards to let's crack UPSC CS English which is India's largest learning platform and once you get subscribed you will have unlimited live and recorded courses from the India's best educators and the privileges you get once you subscribe are the daily live classes, live testing quizzes and structured courses and unlimited access to the live and recorded courses and these are the educators which you can see it on your screen and the courses that is in regards to let's crack UPSC CAC English you have the courses uh, economy, environment and ecology and the current affairs and along with that you have all the other courses which you can also see it on your screen and the other courses which are also available are essay writing, internal security and social issues and the other are also seen on your screen and in regards to Let's Crack UPSC CS English subscription you have 12 months of subscription wherein the original price is 44,000 and then you can use my code SBT10 that is Sandeep Bhushan Tumala10 while you are subscribing for 12 months subscription wherein you will get 10% of that is you can avail 10% discount on the original price that is 44,000 and the discounted price would be 39,600 and you also have the 24 month subscription that is the original price being the 64,000 and use my code while you are subscribing for 24 months also SBT10 that is Sandeep Bhushan Tumala10 because you can avail 10% discount on the original price that is 64,000 and the discounted price would be 57,000 600. So that is in regards to Let's Crack UPSC CS English subscription, 12 month subscription and also 24 month subscription. So do not forget to use my code SPT10 that is Sandeep Bhushan Tumala10. And this session is in regards to the in-depth analysis of the trending editorials and articles wherein my tagline that is I would be emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases. So keywords and the key phrases are very very important in regards to prelims and also in regards to mains examination. So my keywords will certainly help you and also equip you, enhance you with more marks in the prelims as well as mains examinations. And before I get into the topic, I would say very good morning to everyone who are live and also in the live chat. That is Siddharthan, Sravani, Naresh, Satya and also David Paul. Also very good, good morning to you. And then now I'll get into the topic. That is the topic for today is the article which talks about the in pandemic crisis bridging the gulf with west asia so definitely we know that we i mean india has a very good relations very good relations with the persian gulf countries and also with the west asian countries so definitely the relations also when we are talking about the bilateral relations or diplomatic relations and also in regards to the the trade relations also we have very good relations with the uh, gulf persian gulf countries and also the West Asian countries and what is important is that now we are focusing on the way the uh, the entire COVID-19 pandemic situation which has COVID-19 pandemic has created a lot of disturbance in regards to the global supply chain and also in regards to the imports and exports across the countries across the globe and then focusing emphasizing on the India's uh, India's trade with the Persian Gulf countries and the West Asian countries so definitely there is a sense 
<coughs> sorry there is a sense that we need to look at what is the trade which has been really shrinked because of the covid-19 pandemic situation and also the global lockdown and also the global lockdown so definitely it is a area of concern or else it is a area of area wherein we need to look at that what is that we need to make sure that the investors have to uh, move forward in regards to india's investments in the persian gulf and the west asian countries and also the the foreign investors that is from the persian gulf countries and also from the west asian countries that we need to make sure that we are inviting the foreign investors especially from the gulf countries and the west asian countries to come and invest in india so that the economy will flourish the trade will flourish that is economic diplomacy so we are talking here in regards to the economic diplomacy economic diplomacy with the persian gulf countries and the west asian countries this entire issue our uh, entire topic would be in regards to the economic diplomacy so focusing on the economic diplomacy that is a foreign investors investing in india and also indian investors investing in the various countries in the persian gulf and also as well as the west asian countries and when we are talking about this investment that is foreign investors along with that foreign investors we have the remittances we have the remittances which we get it that is india get it from the Persian Gulf countries or also from West Asian countries. So there are the Indian diasporas who are working in the Gulf countries and West Asian countries. Thereby again, there is job created for them. There is employment for them. There is income for them. There is also saving from them. And that those savings are definitely being sent back to India by those families towards the families which are in India. So definitely these kind of what you say money that is the remittances which we are getting and that is part of the foreign exchange is also very, very important that we need to focus it because because of the national lockdown, because of the, what you say, entire global lockdown, that is the global lockdown because of the COVID-19 situation, we have seen that the entire, what you say, the uh, global economy has come to a standstill. And also we have looked at the way the situation is prevailing in the Gulf countries and in the West Asian countries is, has really ampered the the jobs of the Indians, that is Indian diaspora, and also many of them have come back to India. So definitely there is no remittances now, just not getting or bringing back the expatriates or the Indian diaspora to India. But what is important is we need to again provide them the jobs in India. We need to provide them the jobs in India. Take care of their employment. Take care of their what you say basic needs. And also making sure that even the remittances will be lost. Not only the providing jobs to them but also remittances will be cut short, will be lost because they are all come back to India and then there are no jobs. And the one who are still staying there, staying there Definitely, they are not having the required number of jobs because of the oil crisis, because of the crude oil crisis, because of the crude oil crisis. So, we will look at entire that which pertains to the economic diplomacy. So, India's economic diplomacy towards Gulf, Persian Gulf countries and West Asia and West Asia. So, in the process, we will look at the stakes in numbers. That is stakes in numbers in the sense, the kind of what you say, the the we the way we have i mean indians have brought back the indian diaspora expatriates into india and then we will look at that and the oil and investment that is how the oil and the investments foreign investments also hampers or it it provides a what you say new path for the economic re-emergence of the economic diplomacy post covid 19 pandemic situation i mean that is i'm talking about the way the uh, global lockdown is now what do you say away from it and it is unlock of global lockdown which is happening at this situation and how new delhi has to look at the region's investors so that is very very crucial and also we'll look at the what are the steps to take that is the ways the way forward that we need to get into the mode of trying to bridge the differences or the gap which has been created because of the covid 19 pandemic situation the global supply chain which has been disturbed and then create back or get back or the way forward to bridge the gulf with bridge the gulf between the persian gulf countries and the west asian countries and there is we will also look at the reverse migration and jobs so as i just said it is not that we are just what do you say getting them back but also we need to i mean we in the sense the government of india has to focus on creating jobs employment to them so we will look at all this <coughs> sorry and we know that as the world continues now to battle the COVID-19 pandemic, as I have said in the introduction. So this has shattered the lives, not only lives, 
it has also shattered the economies or the entire global economy itself global economy itself it has been shattered and definitely it is the political and global institutions have also been disturbed because of the covid 19 pandemic situation so along with the global economy the political and global institutions political and global institutions have also been what you say disturbed and because of this the post pandemic architecture may look drastically different from what we have been used to so definitely the kind of the kind of covid 19 or the the way the covid 19 pandemics has created shambles or create or shattered lives and the economy and also the political and global institutions across the world has really brought in a new kind of situation wherein we haven't faced it earlier wherein we haven't faced this earlier so now the situation is entirely different and then we need to make sure that whatever the situation was earlier and what the situation what we are facing or encountering because of the covid 19 pandemic situation we have to look at it in a very different sense we have to what you said we have to look at the drastic changes which has happened and then move forward trying to uh, uh, clear those and then move forward trying to make sure that we are bridging the gaps what have been uh, the gaps which have been created because of the COVID-19 pandemic such situation that is in regards to the global supply chain <clears throat> and also in regards to the global trade or the global economy itself and for India what is important is its foreign policy as I said it is very very important in regards to the economic diplomacy when I am talking about economic diplomacy it is none other than the India's foreign policy so this is in regards to the group i mean general uh, general studies paper too that is in regards to the international relations which will be very very important and also in regards to the and also in regards to the the economy that is how we are trying to have build the or re recreate or rebuild or revive the economic diplomacy which was existing with india with the gulf countries and also the west asian countries and post covid 19 situation or post covid 19 pandemic situation the re-emergence or the necessity of the re-emergence of the economic diplomacy that is which is part of the india's foreign policy towards the region and that has to be strategic economic and even we need to look at the domestic political agendas range, ranging from migration to energy security. So how this economic diplomacy will be taken into consideration that is the strategic and economic. So we need to have a strategic and economic diplomacy which has to which has to be part of it and along with this along with this we need to look at the domestic political agenda so domestic political agenda both from india side point of view india india as a country and also the domestic political agenda of the persian gulf countries and also the west asian countries so definitely not only just talking about the economic diplomacy not only just what you say looking at the or else looking at the significant ground of the strategic and economic but also the domestic political agenda of the various countries in the persian gulf and also west asia should be taken taken into consideration and again in regards to india that is the migration migration what is happening between india i mean between uh, the migration which is happening from the persian gulf towards india and also the energy security these are very very important so all this entire this is very very important for your answer writing so definitely you can put this put this direct you can put this point in your mains answer writing in your mains you can put directly into your answer that is it is going it should go ahead with the foreign policy that is with the west asia gulf countries holds a significant quote or significant ground for what strategic economic and even the domestic political agenda ranging from what are the political agenda domestic political agenda the ranging from migration to energy security so definitely the migration should also be taken into consideration and then the energy security should also be taken into consideration and then move forward so that we will try to re-emerge or revive the economic diplomacy which has been shattered both the lives and the economy between india and the gulf countries and the west asian countries and then malvika sajivan has joined madhu has joined very good morning to both of you very good morning to both of you and the pandemic has initiated reverse migration of india so definitely the new concept here is reverse migration of india and this please do take it into consideration as a keyword or the key phrase what is reverse migration of india this is a new concept which is going to come up and this is what is happening the blue collar workers as projects in the oil rich state so definitely blue collar jobs which are the skilled workers who are working in the oil rich state that is in the persian gulf and even in the infrastructure development halts amidst a contracting global economy so definitely because of the covid 19 situation and also because of the 
the crash in the crude oil prices the crash in the crude oil prices have clearly made a statement that that there is a concept or initiation because of the pandemic situation that is the reverse migration of india of the blue collar workers are happening which they were actually working in the oil rich states and the stalls and also in the infrastructure development and now it is halting and it has really contracted the entire global economy itself it has contracted the global economy that some way say that is the greatest after the what is the 1930s that is the uh, uh, right what you have seen in the great depression great economic depression in the 1930s and the situation what we are facing is just what do you say what the situation was in 1930s that is at the time of the great economic depression so after that till now there was not such a kind of what do you say a, a, a global or contracting global economy and then hampering the lives of the migrations migrants also so this is the situation what is prevailing now across the world and that we are linking it with the india with the persian gulf countries and also with the west asian countries please do understand we have looked at the few few keywords here which are very very important that is in regards to the <clears throat> significant port significant port port for strategic and economic along with or even with domestic political agendas that is again in regards to the reverse migration of indian blue collar jobs so we have looked at what do you say what is the situation which is prevailing for or uh, prevailing because of the covid 19 pandemic situation and now we will look at this that what are the persian gulf countries so we have we know it is iran iraq and then kuwait bahrain qatar united arab emirates and then saudi arabia and then oman one two three four five six seven eight so persian <coughs> persian gulf countries are the one and these are very very important because we are talking of we were talking about domestic political agenda domestic political agenda so definitely we need to consider what are the domestic political agenda of these eight persian gulf countries and accordingly we need to go ahead with uh, amending or changing the uh, economic diplomacy of our india's foreign policy so definitely we have to look at what is happening in iraq iran and then kuwait and then bahrain saudi arabia qatar united arab emirates and then oman accordingly we need to make sure that there is again peace uh, between all these persian gulf countries so that there would be a situation wherein india's economic diplomacy or india's foreign policy would be best suited for all these countries and for that there has to be peace there has to be peace especially amongst these countries among these countries and definitely this is the strait of hormos state of hormos wherein the all these countries which are what do you say the the part of the persian gulf countries they need to have a easy accessible easy accessible from the persian gulf to the gulf of oman and then further into the what do you say the the, the other uh, international waters so this area that is strait of hormos has to be what do you say cleared has to be cleared in the sense there should not be any kind of what do you say uh, problem in regards there should not be any kind of problem in regards to the issues which are purchased which are pertaining to the freedom of accessible through the strait of hormos between the uh, eight persian gulf countries and that is very very important and then when there is peace and then there is accessible through the strait of hormos between the persian uh, gulf countries so definitely we can have the domestic political agendas will be resolved and then india can go ahead with the economic diplomacy economic diplomacy and then india's foreign policy will be suited for its its own national interest that is india's national interest so that could be just a minute that could be in regards to making sure that we are actually we are actually in regards to having that economic diplomacy in place wherein it will be beneficial for india only and also the other countries why because we know very clear that we are dependent much on the trade and also in regards to the trade and also in regards to the remittances and these are the west asian countries so i was talking about not only in regards to the persian gulf countries but also the west asian countries so along with the persian gulf countries we have the west asian countries that is in regards to the turkey 
and also in regards to the uh, Georgia or Azerbaijan, Armenia. And then as we have discussed about Persian Gulf, Iran, Iraq, and then in regards to even Syria now, and also the one which are West Asia, that is Israel, Lebanon, Jordan is there, and also Palestinian territories, that is the Gulf, uh, Gaza Strip, and the West Bank. Palestinian territories, in the, what do you say, in this area, these two dots are the Gaza Strip and the West Bank and the West Bank and if you look at the other are in regards to Saudi Arabia and then Oman and then Qatar, Kuwait, UAE, all these are the part of it along with this Yemen. So definitely the West Asian countries and also West Asian countries and the Persian Gulf are definitely very very important in regards to uh, in regards to making sure that we are uh, re-emphasizing and re-emerging the economic diplomacy which was actually there between India and the Persian Gulf and the West Asian countries in regards to the trade, in regards to the trade. And what are the stakes in numbers? So definitely we have seen that there, are, there is definitely that uh, trade is very, very important between both the countries when we are talking specific, specifically in regards to the economic diplomacy. And first and foremost, India would repatriate. That means India had actually gone ahead with repatriating almost 1 lakh citizens right from May 17 till June 13 from 60 countries, majority from the West Asian countries. That is because of the COVID-19 situation, COVID-19 pandemic situation, India did try to, India did, time, did take an initiative in trying to get back the Indian uh, citizens or expatriates, making sure that most of them, that is most of them are from the West Asian region. That is we have most of the remittances even from the Persian Gulf and from the West Asian countries and that is why it is very important that we need to focus on the economic diplomacy and between June 10th and June 16th around 20 flights that is what I was talking about that bringing the Indian citizens back from India from Saudi Arabia especially and also from the West Asian regions and from the United Arab Emirates almost 3.4 million Indians are working that is the Indian diaspora who are working in the United Arab Emirates and this is very very important that is the reason we are having that most of the remittances which are coming back to India and almost 9 million Indians work in West Asia so this is very very important so look at it and this data please make sure that you also mention if it is uh, what do you say it will be very impressive even in the main census 3.4 million Indians and in regards to the Overall, in West Asia itself, you look at 9 million, 9 million Indians work in the West Asia. And this is very, very important that they are always sending back more than 56% of India's annual infusion, that is 80 billion in remittances. So when I was talking about remittances, so definitely there is a huge amount which is coming back to India in the form of remittances. That is in the, that is 80 billion, 80 billion US dollars in the form of remittances it is coming back to India and that is what is very important we have a significant ground that is what is that the significant ground or significant court what India has in what India has in Persian Gulf and West Asian countries so that is what I was talking about here the workforce in the entire West Asia is what you say 56 percent annually uh, India's annual infusion that is 80 billion US dollars remittances is coming and from UAE alone it is 19 UAE alone it is 19 billion US dollars 19 billion not million in remittances and it is the third largest trading partner and UAE is the India's India's third largest trading partner and these all these are very 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 important information for prelims point of view please make sure that it is very very important for prelims point of view and this information please note it down so that i mean we all feel even if i am a civil servant aspirant i feel even i can uh, what do you say keep it in mind but definitely many a times this information we might lose and we may not get it elsewhere so please do try to take down the notes also so are you all getting it <laughs> are you all getting it the important significant ground and Ravi uh, Achanta very very good morning to you Ravi sorry I was little bit engrossed in the explanation I did not respond to you 10 38 and 10 44 almost 10 minutes extremely sorry Ravi good morning to you 
Kamani Sar says, yes, uh, you, Aja. Venkatesh also, very good morning to you, Venkatesh. Fine. So, now I'll get to the next. And the kind of what you say, impressive numbers are now under stress. So, definitely what I was talking about all this year, all this, that is 80 billion US dollars in regards to the remittances and also in regards to the 19 billion from UAE and UAE being the third largest trade partner of India after, this is very important, after United States and China. So, when I'm saying third, again, it is after US and China. So, definitely, again, this is very important for prelims point of view. So, all this looks very rosy and very nice, but there is something which is under stress now. There is under stress now for the first time since the Gulf War in the 1991. So, we have, we have seen the Gulf War in that region in the year 1999 and the situation has become so grim now uh, because of the COVID-19 situation or COVID-19 pandemic situation and this kind of situation was there else I mean in the past only during or only at the time of the Gulf War in 1991 and the other one is in regards to the oil price so one is the Gulf War and the other one is the oil price crash oil price crash so can you uh, so please do understand why this situation is very difficult or different now it is one is one reason is that the gulf war in the year 1991 and the other one is oil price crash can anyone say why the oil price has been crashed no doubt it is slowly what you say gradually coming to a uh, better position now but what could be the reason anyone could say the oil price crash Satya, Swavani, Malvika, Madhu, Naresh. Why there was oil price, oil price crash in the Persian Gulf or the OPEC countries? Recently, in the month of March, it has happened. March uh, first week. Okay, I'll go ahead. We have seen that Saudi Arabia and Russia. We, we have seen that because of the because of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic situation or because of the COVID-19, there was, uh, what do you say, competition. Yes, there was competition. And why competition? Why competition? Because, because of the COVID-19 uh, situation, the global supply chain has been drastically hit. Global supply chain, less demand. Okay, fine, less demand. Uh, Nare says less demand. And that because of that, global supply chain has been drastically come down. That because of... But you said no import exports, no economic trade, no economic trade because of uh, global supply chain has been badly hit because of no economic trade. Because of that, the demand, because of that, demand has been reduced. Because of that, demand has been reduced. When the demand has been reduced, so definitely we know that when the demand is less, definitely the prices also will fall down. When the demand is high, then the prices also will be high so definitely here trade has diminished yes trade, uh, Venkatesh says trade has diminished why it has diminished is because of the COVID-19 situation because of that no economic trade because of that global supply chain has been badly hit because of that no demand because of no demand prices have come down and when the prices have come down what the Saudi Arabia and Russia have said is actually opaque countries actually opaque countries have said that we will cut short in the cut short the oil production cut short the crude oil production opec countries have said we will cut short the crude oil production because there is no demand because of the covid 19 situation so we will cut short the uh, crude oil production thereby the prices will what is a stabilize but saudi arabia and russia did not go ahead with cut shorting the uh, crude oil production crude oil production but rather they go they have gone ahead with continuing the crude oil production so that has created crash in demand and then increase massive cost increase in the prices and this has affected the west asia why are we linking all this is because we are talking about that persian gulf and west asian uh, countries are the definitely the the ground wherein we can have more of trade with those countries but if you look at because of the COVID-19 and because of the oil prices, these two, these two, one and two, because of this, the West Asian economy, West Asian economy itself has been, because of this, West Asian economies and its associations, everyone, if you look at even the prices, even the, what do you say, employees have been, 
layoff and that has really impacted the economy of the west asia and also the uh, opec countries and also the persian gulf so if you look at according to the du dubai chambers of commerce and industry survey so you have a survey made by or done by the dubai chamber of commerce and industry and this survey says that more than 70% of the business is based on the small and medium enterprises in dubai and many have been owned by the indian nationals please do understand this and look at it 70% as 70% as yes madhu because of price de decrease yes but price has decreased and because of that the west asian economies have been shattered not only shattered the workers layoff of the workers have also taken place and but that is what is important and the survey which has been done by the du dubai chamber of commerce and industry says that 70% of the business which takes place in what you say persian gulf countries or in dubai itself especially dubai they are the small and medium uh, size enterprises in dubai which are owned by indian nationals and now look at it because of the national lockdown they are forced to what you say shut down their business small and medium size enterprises in dubai and then come back to india so they have lost the job they have also lost the business and also the business of dubai is also lost the economy of dubai is also at stake now <clears throat> and it has come as a labor critical industry such as even to the tourism conven uh, conventions hospitality and airlines have been the worst hit along with the small and medium sized enterprises which have been owned by the indian national along with that the businesses which are critical industries in regards to the tourism convention hospitality and airlines have also been badly hit and by this what is happening is the economy of dubai also has come down along with the economy of the dubai uh, coming down drastically or contracting what has happened is as there was no no other chance or no other means the indians who were owning the business have to shut down the business and then come back to india come back to india and that is the large what is a, a concern that india has to now provide the jobs one to the one who are who have come back to india reverse migration and in saudi arabia we have seen that consumer spending in april 2020 has come down to 34.6 percent so definitely because of the national lockdown or because of no business or uh, uh, business revival was not there or the damage which was done to the economic activity in the dubai or else in the personal gulf countries or west asian countries have very very uh, very clearly made it clear that the saudi arabia in saudi arabia the consumer spending we are talk about the purchasing power parity or consum consumer capacity spending consumer uh, capacity spending this has reduced to 34.6 and this is because of the effects of oil price crash as i said and this has has brought in a great impact or a blow significant blow to the reforms because saudi arabia crown prince saudi arabia crown prince was actually going ahead with various reform plans he has initiated various reform plans and those reform plans which was taken up by the saudi arabia crown prince that is mbs mohammed bin salman especially he has we wanted to go ahead with reform plans that is in regards to the mega projects the mega project he wanted to go ahead was in regards to the 500 billion this look at it 500 billion futuristic mega city of neom and this is very important for prelims point of view and also <clears throat> for a better understanding that you can make a point in your uh, uh, essay also and this is at the co coast of red sea so what is a mega city mega city called as neom and this is the reform plans or uh, along the reform plans the mega project the uh, prince Mohammed bin Salman wanted to go ahead with the mega project, which is of uh, 500 billion US dollars. It is a futuristic mega city called as Neom, which has been planned at the coast of Red Sea, Red Sea, and also various other reforms in regards to the structural efforts to open up the Saudi economy itself. So he wanted to open up the Saudi economy and move the country's financial ecosystem away. So definitely, we have seen that. the kind of impact because of the oil crisis crash which has taken place its its economy was dwindling and for that he wanted to open up the country's financial ecosystem and that was the what do you say reforms which the saudi prince was actually into the mode of getting into the mode but all that has been shattered and also if you look at the consumer spending in saudi arabia has reduced to 34 percentage so this is affecting a lot and if you look at this 
you have a very good uh, what do you say knowledge now which is also very very important for prelims point of view from prelims point of view also it's very very important and then what i was talking about the mega city project by the uh, uh, saudi prince that is in regards to the 500 billion us dollars so it is the neom city at the red sea i said coast of red sea so you have this here mega city <clears throat> which will be built on untouched land along the saudi arabia's red sea coastline near egypt this is very important egypt and so saudi arabia and then egypt and then jordan saudi arabia egypt and jordan and then jordan so which among the following countries are part of the mega city initiated by the crown prince mbs of which is of 500 billion us dollars named as neom city is Saudi Arabia, Egypt and Jordan. Please do understand from Prelims point of view. And it will be spread across 26,500 26, km, square kilometers. So definitely it is a mega project. It is a mega project. And will this will focus on the industries including energy and water, biotechnology, food advanced manufacturing, food advanced manufacturing and entertainment. So it would be focusing on industries, it would be focusing on energy, water, biotechnology, biotechnology, food and then advanced manufacturing and entertainment. So all these will be, I mean all these sectors will also be boosted, will also be boosted, thereby, thereby job creation employment employment generation and then what will happen the foreign investors will come and invest and this will be powered by clean energy so look at this this mega project which is the initiation taken by the saudi prince and these are all very very important for prelims point of view as well you can put it in your mains while you are writing in regards to the uh, the persian gulf or saudi arabia the way we have relations and then when we are talking about that how it is being impacted or it will impact the both the uh, political domestic political agendas and then india's economic diplomacy with the saudi arabia in fact and oil and investment if you look at definitely 60 percent of india's hydrocarbons india's hydrocarbons if you look at 60 percentage of india's hydrocarbons have been what you say uh, fulfilled by from the west asia from the west asia so this is again very very important for better understanding from prince also so how much india gets from the west asia's india's requirement is fulfilled by 60 percent of its hydrocarbons have been fulfilled from the west asia itself on an analyzed or annualized yearly basis india saves 1.35 billion dollars for each one drop in oil prices so definitely there is a benefit that is why it is a very important strategy for economic and economic and uh, strategically it is important to make sure that we revamp or re-energize the economic diplomacy or e uh, economic economic diplomacy with the Persian Gulf countries and West Asian countries and then 1.35 billion US dollars for each one drop in oil prices so this is what we are India is saving and 60 percent of its hydrocarbons have been I mean met by the West Asia uh, sir, uh, Nare says, sir, to stabilize oil prices, OPEC plus, uh, plus came into picture. I, I, no, no, that is definitely. And okay, I'll tell you. Actually, it was Donald Trump. It was Donald Trump who has uh, <laughs> telephoned to MBS and he said during the G20 summit, virtual summit, G20 summit, it said OPEC countries come together and it has said, Donald Trump has said to MBS, that is, Saudi Arabia, you take the initiative in the G20 summit along with the OPEC countries and resolve the issue with Russia in regards to not going at with more of oil crude oil production but reduce the or cut down the crude oil production so that the oil prices will stabilize and that is why now the crude oil prices have stabilized under 40. Naresh, I think you are getting the point. Naresh, I think you got the point. 
it was donald trump who has said this and this has happened and now that is why now the what do you say crude oil price is under 40 under 40 and this softening of oil prices and what you said is exactly right they have come the, the, it is resolved it is resolved it is resolved and that is what the softening of oil prices have helped cushion the impact of national lockdown on the balance of payments so look at it the oil prices <laughs> It, it is a blessing in disguise also for India that whatever the oil prices, crude oil prices have been reduced and still it is what you say under what you say normal, not close to what you say 60, 70 per barrel, not close to 60, 70 dollar uh, per barrel. But because of the softening the oil prices, it has really helped India during the national lockdown for what? For the balance of payments. This is very, very important for prelims. All of you, all of you, please uh, consider these points. Siddharthan, Sravani, Naresh, Satya, David, Malvika, Madhu, Venkatesh, Ravi. All of you, please do consider these points. Whatever I am saying. So, balance of payments. Again, this is very important for prelims point of view in eco economy. They would ask about the balance of payments. So, do try to, what you say, understand the importance of the keyword here, balance of payments. And India has also taken advantage of the low prices because... Uh, it has built up its strategic reserves. So it has not just, what do you say, it has helped the balance of payments of India at the time of what is a national lockdown, but it has also, it has also, India has also built the strategic reserves. It has, what do you say, pulled in, but it has, what do you say, uh, um, it has built its reserves, reserves in regards to the oil reserves, strategic oil reserves, and is looking at offshore storage options also, not only India, but also into the offshore offshore storage options so these are this strategic reserve is a keyword uh, offshore storage option is uh, offshore is that what out of india offshore not shore of the shore outside and the major sovereign wealth funds so you have something called as sovereign wealth funds and other financial institutions in west asia in west asia so definitely these have been hit by COVID-19. That is why the COVID-19 pandemic situation. So what are the ones which have been hit? That is sovereign wealth funds and also the financial institutions in West Asia have been hit badly by the COVID-19. And some have, what do you say, the other one which are also into the one which have been badly hit are the real estate and the retail portfolio, which they actually, uh, what do you say, invest in the, which they invest in the, stock markets or in the equity markets itself across the globe across the globe so what is been hit badly is the uh, sovereign wealth funds and also the financial institutes the real estates and the retail portfolios retail portfolios and these please do take it into consideration all these keywords and do do mention in your notes please do mention in your notes that is in your in your books and this is impacting a lot in regards to the its economy itself since last three months the sovereign wealth funds financial institutions and also the real estates retail portfolios they have been shrunk dramatically and that is happening since last three months that is from the month of march wherein we have seen the global lockdown has taken place because of the covid 19 pandemic situation and that is really impacting the economy of the economy of West Asia, Persian Gulf countries, focusing on uh, what do you say, UAE and also Saudi Arabia and impacting India also, impacting India also. And now India is well placed to attract a significant amount of capital from West Asia. So now India, that is what uh, Nirmala Sitaraman, Finance Minister has said that we will go ahead with the privatization. During that five phases of, uh, okay, Satya says any country name of storage options. So definitely it is in regards to the way we can go ahead with the Southeast Asian countries, Malaysia, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Madagascar, Maldives, Maldives, offshore. Satya, are you getting the point? These countries can be used wherein India is having good relations with those countries. So, the yeah, finance minister has come up saying that in the uh, five phase, uh, during that five phase, it says that privatization will take place and privatization will take place except, except, except the strategic, 
except in the strategic areas except the strategic areas except the strategic areas you will have what you say privatization area so definitely now india is very well placed to attract the significant amount of capital from west asia and reports of investment by uae that is mubadala mubadala that is from uae saudi arabia's public investment fund fund pif saudi arabia's pif are also what you say are looking at india for the investment for investment and definitely these kind of what you say uh, the inviting the foreign investors at this time is a welcome move from india so that the economy the business revival will take place and the economic reforms announced by what i was uh, talking about the finance ministry uh, at the time of what you say uh, along with the prime minister which has come up who uh, when he has come up with the 20 lakh crore economic stimulus package then five phases in the five phases finance minister has come up with that and has brought in much needed clarity to industrial and agricultural policy so definitely what i was talking about privatization except the strategic areas extra except the strategic areas you will have privatization from the uh, uh, foreign investors and there it is very clear that the finance ministry has made it very clear in regards to privatization especially in the agri uh, industrial and also in regards to the agricultural policy it was very clearly stated about this that privatization will take place and it will be helpful for the economic reforms part of the economic reforms and a strong positive message to west asian investors from del now uh, from new delhi is now the need of there so definitely uh, the finance minister and then the uh, prime minister has done their job and now what is important is now diplomatically we need to make sure that we send a strong and positive message to the west asian foreign investors to come and invest in india to come and invest in india and now we will look at the what are the steps to be taken step to be taken so we have looked at the maharashtra government has expedite expedite in the sense it has fastened it has what do you say it is, it is going at with making things faster in regards to land acquisition for what 50 billion us dollars mega refinery project could be an important first step so definitely need of the r is what to uh, go ahead with giving a strong and positive message to the west asian uh, investors and that has started by the maharashtra government and it is expediting it is uh, making sure that it will fasten the land acquisition for the 50 billion mega refinery project so there would be a mega refinery project which will be coming up in maharashtra and this is again very important for prelims point of view prelims point of view please do understand whichever i was talking about uae is there also prelims point of view UAE is mubadala and saudi arabia's pif that is public investment fund and all this please do understand in regards to the trade that is economic diplomacy there could be a question being framed under the current affairs that is international relations or economy or economy and saudi arabia's aramco and abu dhabi abu dhabi's national oil company noc national oil company have committed to invest 25 billion us dollars in the project so definitely that is in regards to the mega refinery project which is coming up in maharashtra would be uh, by the investments made by the <coughs> saudi uh, company that is aramco and then the abu dhabi national oil company and these are very very important <laughs> now we are not in Achha, why should we go and invest okay siddharthan says why should so one thing is we we will find out we will okay which india whichever india is in strong or we have the technology comparatively to other countries india will go and invest in those countries because it will be economically viable for us to make business and profits siddharthan first of all economically it will be viable and also we will make profits out of that business and then create employment generation in those areas along with that indians also will be what you say protected from being making from being that they are not left alone as an unemployed in those countries fine and also making sure that when we are inviting them we also provide again india is also providing job creation employment generation even in india and then while we are having this mega refinery project so definitely it is in regards to because first statement itself i said energy security Please do understand, sir. Siddhartan, I'll 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 go back to the first page. Yeah. 
here i was talking about energy security so here i was talking about energy security see here energy security energy security here also i was talking about energy security so this is very important energy security so that is what we need to go ahead with the what do you say investments and also we would invite the foreign investors to come and invest in india also because of energy security siddharth are you getting the point along with that we will also what do you say create employment in india for the indians with the foreign companies coming and investing in india for that we are providing them the land and the maharashtra government will provide them the land that is the land acquisition is being taken up and that is worth 50 billion us mega refinery project uh, satya says is there any group or organization formed including india and gulf persian countries only like brics uh, not really no no we will look at not really and now we will look at what is that indians are investing or indian companies are investing in the persian gulf countries or the west asia so definitely we have this what do you say fast track uh, resolutions to end the litigation so definitely when we wanted the foreign investors to come and invest in india so we need to make sure that they will not be or legal issues should be resolved legal issues should be resolved and that has to be bad evil and that has bad evil the sale of major stake of mumbai airport by gvk so what is the issue that we had this mumbai airport by gvk to have a concern term that includes the uae sovereign fund abu dhabi investment authority will also spend send out a positive signal so definitely if you are trying to resolve any kind of what is a legal issues which are there between india and the foreign uh, investors companies so if we resolve that then definitely things will move further and then things will move further in regards to making sure that other investors from the other countries will also come and invest in india thinking that there would be not any legal issues or if the legal issues persists or prolong so definitely the foreign investors will not uh, look at india to come and invest in india because they know very clearly that there are the legal issues which will definitely persist once again and that is the reason why we need to go ahead with resolving any kind of legal issues also and some of the us largest companies like etisalat mr etihad these three what do you say us largest companies have previously had a tough time that is what i am saying in their investment in their why because of the legal issues and this has to be dealt very clearly and swiftly also swiftly also that is why it is very important that any kind of situation which arises as legal issues has to be dealt it then and there or else the situation will become very grim in regards to the economic diplomacy with the persian gulf countries and by creating a few immediate success stories india has the opportunity to transform the landscape and attract so definitely in regards to the land acquisition and also in regards to attracting the long term capital from the uh, uh, other countries is also very very important that we are providing a positive signals and now the government has and the government has also announced that is the uh, cabinet secretary rajiv gova gova has also taken various steps to attract F fdi so definitely india is also going ahead with uh, which one are you talking about gdp see gdp is whatever we are making profits out of it gross domestic product whenever whenever job creation is happening whenever employment is there job creation is happening whenever job creation is happening that means that means people are getting jobs when people are getting jobs people are also having money people are having what do you say savings when people are having savings definitely they will be in the mode of uh, purchasing power capacity increases when purchasing power capacity increases that increases again the entire chain economic chain will be increased so again that will add uh, to the gdp are you getting it siddharthan that will again add to the gdp it will it will and along with that fdi i mean the government of india is also now along with the what is a bureaucrats are also attracting the fdis to come and invest in india in india definitely as 
and reverse migration now we will look at the reverse migration and jobs what is important what i have said or what i have uh, what you said put forth at the beginning at the beginning the economic processes come true till a certain degree india will also share the brunt with west asia so definitely uh, whatever is uh, going at vicious cycle yes 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 Vengadesh, vicious cycles get stabilized. Absolutely, absolutely. That is why that is why job creation is very important. When there is job creation, so ultimately it will impact positively the growth of the nation, GDP, growth of the nation. And the way the West Asia has been impacted, India will also be impacted or will share the brunt of it. And both are well placed to help each other. So when definitely the West Asia or the Persian Gulf have been badly hit because of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic situation. Even though, I mean, all uh, along with that, along with that, India is also been badly hit. Well, I'll write it here. Plus Persian Gulf, Persian Gulf plus West Asia. Persian Gulf is West Asia, which has been badly hit because of the COVID-19, and because of that, along with Persian Gulf plus West Asia plus West Asia. Even India has been badly hit and now what is important is India should work in tandem with or help each other in trying to revamp the economy of both the West Asia, Persian Gulf and also India together and India together. And definitely the loss of trade revenue, the loss of trade revenue because of the national lockdown, because of the national lockdown and because of the what you say cut short in the remittances because of the cut short of the remittances and the return of the semi-skilled and the skilled workers. Semi-skilled and then the skilled workers who have come back to India because of the national lockdown. That is the loss of trade revenue, loss of or else uh, cut short of remittances. The semi-skilled people and the skilled workers have come back to India and they will be now struggling with out jobs. And that is the cause of concern for India. And to mitigate the same, mitigate in the sense to lessen the uh, uh, lessen the uh, complexity of the returning of the or else reverse migration and the loss of jobs to mitigate. That is to lessen. The government has tried to soften the blow by launching what Swadesh, and this is very important key phrase for prelims point of view. So the government has what do you say launched what to overcome or to mitigate the uh, mitigate the return of the semi-skilled and the skilled workers along with the loss of trade and revenue and remittances is the launch of the skilled workers arrival database for employment support. Please do understand this. This is very very important key phrase and very important for prelims also. And what does it do? That is skilled workers arrival database for employment support. It Attempts to capture the skill profile of returning workers, the one who have returned back because of the total shutdown or the global shutdown in Persian Gulf and the West Asia, the one who have come down, come, uh, come back to India, it will have the data, capture the skills profile of returning workers and house them in a central portal. So they will have a portal which will be a central portal by the government and that can be accessed by Indian and foreign companies. Please do understand. It can be accessed by the Indian and foreign companies. So you never know. The question could be in regards to the Swadesh. The question could be in regards to the Swadesh. You could just write this. Which among the following statements are incorrect in regards to the Swadesh? In prelims. Which among the following statements are incorrect in regards to the term Swadesh? So what is Swadesh? You will ask. And what are what is the uh, what do you say importance of coming up with the Swadesh? He will give you, and also you need to know that what uh, the Swadesh will uh, look at. It will have the portal that is a central portal which will have the uh, profile skill profile of the workers who have returned back. That is skilled workers, and then it will also by the skill uh, by the central portal it can make sure that the access can be done by the Indian and foreign companies to hire the skilled workers. So this Swadesh is very, very, very important for prelims as well as mains point of view. However, much more needs to be done with regard to the reverse migration. So this reverse migration is the one which is a cause of concern to uh, India in regards to providing jobs and also the economies attached to it. Definitely the remittances 
and also the unemployment rate increases and again providing jobs to them globally bilaterally and multilateral trade diplomacy is set to witness a tectonic shift towards the unknown and that is what is very important and please take the question much more much the last one you take the last paragraph as the question itself last paragraph as the question itself india needs to india needs to do a lot india needs to do a lot in regards to reverse migration and the economies attached to west asia and persian gulf countries as globally bilaterally and multilateral trade policy is set to witness a tectonic shift towards the unknown comment india needs to india needs to do india needs to do a lot with regards to you can take the countries here with regards to persian gulf countries or west asian countries to reverse migration and the economies attached to it india needs to do a lot in regards to persian gulf countries and west asian countries to reverse the migration and the economies to attach to it comma as globally bilaterally and multilateral trade policy is set to witness a tectonic shift towards unknown explain explain this explain are you all getting it so this could be a very very what do you say uh, probable question in the mains india needs to do a lot in regards to persian gulf and west asian countries to reverse migration and the economies attached to it full stop full stop as globally bilaterally and multilateral trade policies is set to witness a tectonic shift towards the unknown explain are you all getting it everyone are you all following it madhu venkatesh naresh ravi malvika david satya shravani siddhartan have you taken the uh, yeah yeah okay have you taken the question okay so i hope this was this session was very very informative and knowledgeable and then <laughs> uh what about naresh you haven't taken it you haven't taken it naresh have we have we note down the question Naresh says no sir why so please go ahead with uh, liking the video liking the video and also in regards to share the video subscribe the video in regards to let's crack upsc cs english and do subscribe for 12 months or 24 months by using my code sbt10 that is sandeep bhushan tumala 10 uh, you will you can avail 10% discount while you use my code sbt10 and then if you haven't downloaded the an academy learners app do download and be part of the an academy special classes wherein you can have access to all the courses who are actually been uh, taken up by the various educators why 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 naresh
and then you can also have access to UPSC CSC English in 10 minutes and the telegram link is let's crack UPSC CSC English and then uh, you can also connect me uh, through my telegram link that is t.me slash sandeepbhushan sbt t.me slash sandeepbhushan sbt and you can also whatsapp to my num uh, message to my number that is whatsapp number in regards to any queries in regards to uh, session or in regards to the subject or in regards to preparation my whatsapp number is 9292003111 and, and uh, i would also say uh, thank you all and uh, all the best for your preparation make sure that you are in the right mode of the preparation and then uh, let there be consistency in your preparation and then stick to the basics and then that is uh, conventional and linking with the contemporary issues link the conventional topics with the contemporary issues that is very very important and i would say thank you and then uh, all the best for you see you tomorrow at 7:30 am thank you all